uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, The Master Trials, that's the name of the DLC. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I've played a little bit of it. JV, you've played a, a healthy amount, and mm-hmm. Kyle, you've played an obsessive amount. What is yeah. your overall take on it, Kyle? It's good. <laughs> is it's my it? overall take. I like it. It's uh, So, it's a couple... Sec- there's like there's a couple parts to it. There's like uh, you get there's a couple items and costumes. You know you get some masks which have some use and they also look cool. You can have Majora's mask and the Korok mask, which do they're not just skins. Like the Majora's mask lets you hide among enemies. Is that actually helpful? Because I I had that thing where I started collecting some of those masks and then it's like oh my god Tingle's helmet or Tingle's cool little yeah. hood thing cool and then I wear it for three seconds like well I'll never wear that again. <laughs> like I took a picture with it. It looks stupid. <laughs> it's funny. On. It's funny to go do the Master Trials wearing Tingle's outfit because then you get the really beautiful cutscene of him like placing the sword back in the pedestal dressed as Tingle. Uh, <laughs> but I mean there's armor value for the phantom stuff and like okay. I said the Korok mask shakes when there's Koroks nearby but I think the Tingle one actually doesn't really have a lot of use. No, no, no it does. It at does. night at night you go much faster. Oh that's right you run faster. Yeah. yeah. Is there a Zelda lore reason why? Uh, uh, tingles fast. So, so right? you get the DLC and you just get these costumes. You don't no. need to go do it. <laughs> no, no, no. You have to find them. For Hanson, it's been very difficult. Uh, for JV and I, I don't think it was really. A problem. No. It's just <laughs> look. It, it's frustrating to be like, all right, I got the DLC. How do I experience the DLC outside of like the trials where it makes it very clear? Go yes. here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like it's kind of like a loose scavenger hunt. It's like go to these old ruins. I had no idea what the hell I was looking for. I was looking for like treasure chests around these old ruins. Turns out I was looking for a piece of paper the size of, See, size of a postage stamp that, hidden in some thing, building. It says that in the text. You need to find notes. It says there, there's like written rumors that you need to go find. So you're first, you just didn't read the full description of what no, you need to go do. No, no, no. Hang on, let's see if I have it on my phone. All it right. says something like, there are rumors of uh, the mask being in this yeah, area. Find woman, more at the There's outpost. a woman who writes rumors. Like, she's been there the whole game. Like, she leaves notebooks in every, nearly every stable. I don't think stable. I encountered much of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I maybe skim anyway, through it if you're it a once. smart person, you can find it pretty also, easily. No, also, no, but also that's stupid if, like, if it's just costumes and stuff. See like, that, but just give it, just... They have value, though. It's not just skins. If they were skins, I would just want them. But I, I actually really liked having the opportunity to go track something down and do a little bit more puzzle solving because that's the value of that game is finding things in that open world. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with Kyle. I really actually like the scavenger hunt aspect of it. And I also dug because sometimes the chest will be buried beneath like some ruins or something. You have to use your magnetic abilities to find it. One of them's mar- are buried beneath like one of those old rusted guardians. And so when you pull it up, it does this ludicrous thing where it shoots the guardian into the air with the really? force oh, and like wow. it spins and yeah. then just ca- falls back to the earth. And, I'm like, <laughs> and it wasn't like a major thing, but I went, heh. All right, that's enough. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, but on the ambiguous front, uh, one of the notes is like, hey, we've put four new treasure chests somewhere on the Great Plateau. Man, that's a big space. What? Where am I supposed to go? Is yeah. that worth it? What is that stuff? That's the one mm. that's been there since like when they made the DLC available to purchase for 20 bucks. Those were there right away. One is like a Switch t-shirt. Like that's it's a Link red t-shirt. Wear. Yeah, it's very dumb. And then the other two are actually just like... Uh, like, like bomb arrows and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, like it's, it's not... It's just small things. Well, okay, Mr. Zelda Lorehound. That's me. Uh... So the the go to Zelda writing language that's Hylian 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 uh, does the English is it like Star Wars does the English language exist the written word word exist within Zelda's lore no I think you're just always reading Hylian Hylian well on the new treasure chest it says E X in huge letters and yeah. I call BS on that also the Switch T shirt completely <laughs> non canonical <laughs> very confusing the, the Switch T shirt is is a problem I mean it's we are talking problem. about a video, video game where you can use action figures to just summon goods from the heavens well not if you have a soul and you want to keep the purity of the game intact and not just treat it like <laughs> it's some in there is a special box. power it's yeah. just like what, what's what is it amiibo rune yeah the yeah. amiibo rune oh <laughs> gross <laughs> that game is too holy to corrupt with your dirty uh, toys yeah huh. but th- but you can dress like Link from Skyward Sword it's very yeah. fun alright still <laughs> uh, so all that costume stuff that's that's fine is the meat yeah. of this thing the, the trials yeah like that stuff is is if that was just like what made up the 20 bucks, like that would be a problem. Mm. Also, I think it's a little, it's not great that like a hard mode is sort of pushed behind a paywall, basically. It seems like yeah. hard should be free. Also, I, I maybe you remember the name, the thing where you can look at your map. Heroes tra- oh, Heroes, the Heroes Path. Path. Yeah. Very cool. Another thing that sort of feels like it should have just been an update. Like a general update. Yeah, I don't like That being behind that $20 sort of paywall is kind of weird. It's yeah, because so, yeah, yeah. especially when you consider like, just that like a modern sort of general free update for games that have been out for a while is a hard mode. Like Horizon literally got one today that's yeah. like ultra hard. Like and I had that same reaction with Master Mode where I was like, really? This is this is part of how you're justifying it? To be fair, yeah. like 
it does add stuff that's new to the experience. Like you see brand new enemies that you can only see in master mode, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, eh. and, but it's not like Breath of the Wild was hurting for content. It's not like they're robbing yeah, right. the fans thing, yeah. of an experience, right? But I mean, I, I guess to JV's point, when you look at games like Final Fantasy 15 or Horizon, it's just the amount the the well or the scope of the free updates that they've been adding even I, splatoon yeah yeah i mean oh uh, yeah for the on the nintendo front i agree with like kyle like that those things having not even touched this game at all this dlc at all like from the sound of it that sounds like a weird sort of those two things thing I think to not just give play the hero's path is amazing they did that nintendo was secretly tracking yeah. every single footstep you had what did you, did you have any yeah, like, uh, realization we turned it on and saw it well that like that being said like hero's path is awesome it's like, so it's, cool it even shows you when you can like fast forward through and see where you died and it plays like a little sound effect oh, so really? it, so I've, it, like early on the game if you go back to the beginning and watch your hero's path it'll be like blah, 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 and you'll hear a little sound effect <laughs> and so like right early on my link is going like bah! Trying to take out like the first big yeah. skull cavern place, and, yeah. and it totally has like a uh, strategic value in the game because I was trying to hunt the like the sand beast out in the desert, and I've been one short for forever, like since mm-hmm. the game came out. And I there was I looked at the hero's path mode, and I was like, oh, there are two big chunks that I have never walked through, and yeah. of course it was there. You it's know? really crazy mm. to look at because I I just assumed well, I've been to basically everywhere on this map, I've scoured it, and then look, it's like, oh boy, I ran across the middle of this area once, and there's still huge swaths that are unexplored. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's it's really fun. I really, it's such a nifty little thing that you wouldn't think much of, but I actually spent like 20 minutes watching it, yeah, just, <laughs> and I remember <laughs> early on, like especially like when I got to like the water temple, it was just Link going ba 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 over and over again. <laughs> like 20 times straight it was yeah. amazing uh but so then now the the big part of the dlc the, the 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 big value like the thing that you is i think worth it is the uh the master or the trial of the sword yeah yeah which is really difficult and took me a long time like i probably played it for like four hours total maybe it's five. basically zelda vr missions uh, yeah i mean i don't know i don't think that's like a i think that's kind of a fair comparison because it's it's 45 levels and each level is like memorable and distinct and set up like it's not random there's no random elements to it like you have to go through the 45 levels and each one has different strategies which some you can identify right away some i kind of discovered after dying and having to replay them a couple times but it's always in like that forest fake environment right no, no. oh really there are yeah. other fake environments interesting okay yeah, that makes it a little more interesting yeah. so they are more puzzle oriented it's not just like fight off waves of enemies or things like that so, certainly not waves not puzzles like you're not moving boxes on switches so or anything not, like so that. so it's not like doing shrines no, no. it is not okay. like doing shrines. it feels but, like but, an extension of like the eventide island right yeah actually yeah or yeah eventide is like it's kind of like us eventide oh. cut into chunks yeah. sort of like okay. like i kept thinking about like metal gear 5 honestly because like some some of it's stealth oriented so like you'll come across like the camp of bokoblins or whatever and you'll have like a couple of sticks laid out or you can use like a bomb they have a fire and they're all gathered around it eating a steak so if you want to be a monster and get the the level done really easily you can just toss a bomb over there and kill them all in one hit bombs are super valuable yeah they are so valuable you should upgrade bot you should upgrade bombs for this but um yeah it's it's they feel like open-ended puzzles to me yeah like that Hmm. there's like you have limited resources like this is like you start from zero you start from zero no armor and like you pick up arrows and stuff along the way and it's like okay how do I use the limited resources that I have to like kill the five to ten monsters or the boss monsters that's here? Yeah, and like that's that, literally every single level. Yeah. But it seems like my overall take on the DLCs that I've experienced so far is it seems to be burrowing in on the aspects that aren't necessarily my favorite of Breath of the Wild. Like, like the, the combat. Yeah, combat. Sure. Or the novelty costumes. Like, okay, those are fine maybe for like completionists, but it works for you? Like you enjoyed yeah. the combat that much? Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. It's really weird because I didn't expect to uh enjoy the combat because i don't like breakable things in games like i've never liked a breakable weapon system until actually breath of the wild because i like that it forces me to change weapons that you know and that there are so many weapons there's so many weapons in breath of the wild i didn't know you could one... cook kool-aid in breath of the wild right joe yeah <laughs> sorry joe <laughs> uh anyway but I, I like how fast and fluid it is. I, I never liked combat in Zelda. And this is the first time where I feel like there's just so much that you can do in any encounter. Especially when you're approaching it and you have time to plan for it. Like, use bombs. You can, like, 
pick up metal crates, and there are a lot of metal crates in these puzzles too, with your magnetic abilities, and just slam them into enemies and knock yeah. them off ledges. Hmm. It's also that thing where, like, I went into it, I was like, well, I've never been super great at pulling off the flurry attacks or the counters, and I was like, I, I probably have to get good at this hmm. as I play this. But that's really not the situation. Like, it really is. Look in your pockets. What do you have? What's the best way to use this? You know, and it's like a lot of it is just like. Like one of the last ones, which is a really cool, but also just super intimidating when you're right near the end is you drop in this level and there's a huge horde of uh, Bokoblins on horseback riding at oh you. Oh my God. And a Lionel is ah. in the middle of them. Are you kidding me? And it's me? just like, oh, holy crap. Like, what do I do? And like, it's just, you drop a bomb and you run and you try to get into a tree and like, and those situations <laughs> were awesome. Yeah. Like, that and it, and it's cool. not, it's not about like. <laughs> that sounds like the beginning of an episode of Quantum Leap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really, I mean, uh, yeah, there's a lot of sec- sections where you're like, where the hell am I? What's going on? And then like, arrows are like flying at you and you're like, like in the, the middle section where oh you have a lot of the, God. like a lot of uh, areas where you're flying on your paraglider and stuff oh, like cool. that. Oh, cool. Okay. There's a lot of times where you're like, like, all right, where am I? Oh, there's an arrow flying at me, and you immediately jump and just paraglide into the air and like get out of the way. So there's, there's a lot of really cool moments like that. Yeah, yeah, and they're constantly sort of uh, forcing you to learn new strategies. Like early on in the beginning trials, the easiest thing to do is just rely on your bombs and not blow yourself up. Like honestly, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. But then the middle trials, some of them take place in like a giant wind tunnel. And the way Breath of the Wild works is if you jump, if you drop like a bomb on like you know some air that's blowing up the bomb goes with it so you can't really rely on bombs during these segments so you have to learn completely new strategies to like take on enemies in this particular area and it it does a really good job of like forcing you to learn new strategies which i really dig i like that okay but uh oh actually go ahead i just wanted to yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, I mean, I, you, I think you guys are selling the individual things. I want to know, like, like what what's the payoff? What do you yeah. get for it? Okay. Why do it? Well, th- this is actually what I was going to talk about. One thing to note is when I went into it, I thought you had to do all forty five levels at once, right? Which is not the case, thank God. You can <laughs> jump ahead again. No. What you do is it's it's broken into three parts. Like the first uh, one is beginner. 11, it's just beginner. Oh, it's like yeah. eleven levels and sixteen levels and like twenty four, and then okay. you can do each of those separately. So and and you actually do get a reward for completing each section. The reward is that your master sword gets significantly stronger. Yeah, it's ten points per like thing to up. Yeah. Ten damage points. And so okay. by the end, it's sixty, yep. I think, which makes it really strong. And also it is always turned on. Like mm. usually if you guys remember if you would fight Guardians or Ganondorf, uh, your sword would light up and yeah. become stronger. After you beat the trials, it is always lit up. But it still breaks. But it still breaks. Oh boy. Yeah, which I thought. What going into it, I thought <laughs> the that sword recharges. Yeah, it, yeah. it, it still I, functions I the okay. same. Yeah, and I think, and I could be wrong about this. I have to look at somebody's save file who hasn't beaten it yet. I think the recharge is quicker. I think because mm-hmm. I think it was fifteen minutes. I think now it's ten. No, it was ten. Was it ten? Mm-hmm. Okay, so then that's the same. Yeah. So your 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 master sword is significantly stronger, but it still has the same. Uh, limitations yeah which i thought going into it that it was that that wasn't going to be the case the way they're talking it up even in the intro of like oh this is going to finally unleash the power of it, your master sword they made it sound yeah. like it wouldn't break what i thought was going to happen was that like you would have it would light up you know and you would when it would break it would just become a weaker sword that you could use around yeah you could use, but that's that is not the case it functions the same as it is just a lot stronger Joe, so, yeah. it's a Are bit you of a bummer. Play this DLC? Well, no. Oh no, <laughs> I'm I, I'm I'm You're done. pretty much done with Zelda. I'm done with Zelda at yeah. this point, yeah. like forever. You Every, sound like a yeah. Zelda movie. bitter soul about it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, here's we've talked about this. We've talked about this on the podcast a little before. I don't want to. I don't want to like dredge it all up completely about right? how you played the game wrong. <laughs> but for for me, I think it was like. Like I enjoyed my time with Zelda. I did not enjoy it as much as everyone else seems to. So, but because of that, it makes it sound like I that I that I hate the game or something because it's just my opinion's a little lower than other people's, and mm. that's not the case. I enjoyed Zelda. I'm glad I played it. But like, there are lots of games that I play and enjoy and don't go pick up the DLC for. And I think this is this is going to be one of those. I think I, I'm happy with the time I spent with Zelda, and I'll leave it at that. Right? Because I feel like that's honestly. There's a lot of DLC that I feel that way about where it's like, oh, Final Fantasy 15. I've enjoyed my time with that, but I don't care about these characters enough to like play all of that DLC. Yeah. Or in, the, in that case for me, it's like I want to wait until it's all I played so much of it in, in such a short period of time. That's like for FF 15. I want to go back to it like a year later once all of the changes have been made and then sort of 
I don't want to experience those changes like incrementally. Yeah, and there's also but, just the nature of DLC too. Like Titanfall Two has a ton of like multiplayer only DLC, which is fine. But like I'm not buying any of that, even yeah. though that was my favorite game of last year. Like it's just like skins and weapons and like executions. I don't care. Like yeah. if this was like single player focused like stabbing at what I want from that game, that'd be great. And like, yeah. there's a lot of DLC for mini games that falls into that category of like cosmetics and stuff that I just don't care about. Yeah. That it's I kinda, won't touch. It kind of, it's so tough to go back to such a huge experience like this too. Like I tried even on a flight recently getting back into Breath of the Wild, which is my favorite game of the year so far. But even then I was just kind of milling about like, oh, I guess I'll just find more shrines. Yeah. It's so, I, I was so immersed in that world. But once you're broken from that magic spell and try and go back to, okay, Where's square one? I think the hero's path is a great tool to try and get back. It, it literally that puts you at square one. Yeah, 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 knowing exactly where to explore going forward. Yeah. But yeah, it's Austin Walker had a great piece on this advice about Horizon and Mafia and Breath of the Wild about how really big open world games are terrible at saying goodbye to the player because there's this inclination for them to be like, okay, even though you've completed like the main story and everything that there is in there, like. They don't want the game to end for you in for you so they're just sort of like explore this world but like the majesty of that world is lost like when you beat breath of the wild like actually beat it i do feel like some of the magic is lost because yeah. i mean and to their credit like you know you do load the game like there is no like after state after you beat the game you just have to load before you fight the boss but i i do think that open world games are they there's something lost there when you complete like the main narrative story drive there when you beat the last boss or like your hero story is concluded like what's the reason to still wander around that world because like the side quest i feel often in these games and breath of the wild included um and not the shrines necessarily but the side quest just feel like chores like they still feel like chores, especially even after you've saved the world or done whatever. Yeah. And but before it's like, well, I'll put up with a little bit of a chore because who knows how tough Ganon's gonna be. But once you know that, it's like, well, yeah, now I guess I could get yeah. stronger and beat the Lionels faster. Is yeah. that my payoff here? <laughs> yeah, like and, and it's like the rewards are often not worth it too. Like, oh, you gave me four baked apples. Thank you. Like you There's, want something more there that isn't there after you complete the main part of the game. Yeah. There's a little RPG. I don't know if you you've heard of it called Skyrim. Oh, that, <laughs> um, that I like. I think it's a great example of like an, an open world that actually does. I mean, you complete that main story arc, and then there's like all these other guilds and things. Like that's part of what makes that game, you know, interesting to me is like all so many paths you can pursue are interesting. But I mean, I guess more to your point too. Once you complete say the main story and the major guilds, I think the player it, it's still then sort of left like, I guess I can go run some errands for townspeople. Yeah. People yeah. Or... yeah, but in you know, I honestly don't know if that's such that's such a hard thing to solve, right? Like all games drop off at some point. Like either yeah. your enjoyment like your enjoyment with the video game has to end at some point. Like there is no yeah. game that goes on forever on a single run. Like you can you can enjoy like Mass Effect two or Final Fantasy Six or whatever through multiple playthroughs, but like the game that goes on forever and is enjoyable forever, constantly doesn't exist in my mind. Ask Surreal right. about Dota two, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I think that might be the answer we're looking for here. I think though, I mean, I, I like the I like the phrase saying goodbye to the player though, because like I, I, you're right that that is a very like that is a problem open world games have compared to something like I, I guess I know you guys haven't finished Persona Five yet, but that's one where it's like like it's a single player directed story, and like once you're done, you can start up again, but like that's new game plus. You can't just jump back into the world at the end of Persona Five, and the, and it's one of those things where it's like because it's a more directed story, it really gives you, for me, it had that time to really give you the payoff and just give you the sort of like, you know, right. see you later moment. And, and I feel like a lot of designers and developers are caught between that sort of thing right now where it's like, okay, we want to direct the player to a satisfying ending, but we also want to give them, you know, freedom to do what they want. And none of them have solved it yet. It feels like, like you brought up Skyrim and like, I guess maybe that could do it if like all, like it's not just, chores or whatnot but even to me like the guild stuff isn't interesting but but i, I think the point is that there is no easy solution to that yeah there hey, no easy way out. i want to go back to yeah. the thing about tr master sword breaking still mm -hmm. <laughs> yes i thought that they explicitly said that or if they didn't explicitly say it they really they led it. people to believe that it that it would not because like the phrase was because I remember I had to write up like when they announced the DLC details was unlock the true power of the Master Sword. That was the phrase. And that's that's kind of what everyone went with, which I that was the implication. I mean, that is like, a, that's, that's kind of what I thought, too. Yeah. 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 Wow. So. Well, I 
I actually thought it would just mean I didn't know because I didn't even think about the breakability. I just thought it would actually mean that the sword would be powered up to 60 damage all the time. That would be glowing all the time. I didn't yeah. think about the destructibility thing, but I do think that's a fair reading to read that and go, yep, yeah. this will be unbroken. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, and I guess in that case to me, like that still doesn't like, that seems okay to me. The more, the more I let it sink in, despite my initial shock, like, <laughs> like, for better or worse, I don't like it, but the breakable we weapon system, like the game is built around that. And right. like yeah. having one weapon that doesn't break, I don't think like, I don't think it fixes the problem with, it would fix the problems that I have with that system anyway. And it's still, I think the consistency is probably a good thing to hang yeah. on to. Right. It's nice to have so. a really powerful weapon with you that's usually available. Yeah, yeah. for right. sure. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Informer Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long-form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.